Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season, Christmas and New Year's, and uh, and we're back in business here at the uh, website and the podcast. Today's topic, Giardia. And Giardia is, by most measures, the most common parasite infection in humans worldwide. And in, in the U.S., it's second only to pinworm. And today, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at Giardia. And joining me to talk about this parasite is Chandana Bala. Chandy is the president of the Global Insight Advisory Network and writes on the intersection of healthcare and technology. She's also a frequent, frequent writer for Gideon Informatics. Hey, Chandy, and welcome back to the program. Hi, Robert. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am, and it's very good to have you back. And um, again, enjoying your blog post there with Gideon. And we're going to go ahead and talk about Giardia today, um, kind of a Giardia 101. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Giardia is very common. Um, can you put its commonality and its prevalence into perspective for the audience? Yeah, Giardia is this one cell organism that can cause a lot of trouble. It's one of the most common waterborne diseases in the world. And it the prevalence varies a lot from developed countries to developing countries. So um, in developed countries, it can be as low as two to three percent or two to five percent. And in developing countries, it can be as high as 20 to 30 percent. So what do we know about Giardia's discovery and its history? There's there's always a backstory to all this. Yeah, uh, you know, it was uh, discovered. I actually love the story because it's a testament to the commitment of the father of microbiology to his craft. Um, he, his name was Anthony Von Leeuwenhoek. I'm sure I'm butchering the name. He discovered the microscope. He created it out of, you know, a bunch of different lenses. And he found, was the first guy to find, uh, you know, uh, microorganisms. And he had Giardia, a Giardia infection himself. And he, you know, he was dealing with diarrhea, with the bloating, with the gas, the vomiting, and all the symptoms of it, the dehydration. And he pulled himself up, gathered his stool samples, went to his makeshift microscope, and discovered the parasite. So I thought that was an incredible story. Uh, that was, uh, it took a few centuries later for um, two professors, uh, scientists called Giardia, sorry, Giard and Lamble to, again, I'm not sure how they pronounce, but they described the parasite in detail. And that's why the name of the parasite is Giardia Lamblia. Yeah. And it's also, it also goes by uh, Giardia intestinalis, Giardia yeah. duodenalis. So it goes by uh, uh, several different genus and species names. Yeah. Um, Chandy, it's also known as beaver fever. <laughs> so there's a story behind that, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, there's this beautiful national park in Canada, actually one of the first national parks in Canada, dating all the way back to the 1800s. And a bunch of hikers fell sick after drinking, you know, the what looked like crystal blue waters in at the park, and uh, they fell sick because the water was contaminated with beaver poop. And at the time, they thought that beaver poop caused the uh, infection, so that's why the name. And it stuck, I guess, because it also because it it rhymes and it sounds good. So <laughs> yeah, right, right. So so uh, beavers had a. A, a den down the river or whatever and the they were defecating in the water and the yeah. they pick up the parasite that way yeah um now uh people contract in giardia um how does this typically happen well the most common way to get a giardia infection is through contaminated water so either you're drinking unfiltered or untreated water or you're drinking, you're eating food that's made with this kind of water, or you're traveling to places that have a high prevalence of Giardia and drinking the water there, you know, that's not safe. Uh, that's one of the most common ways. Um, other ways of getting it is through sexual activities that include fecal oral contact. 
um, and another big, you know, shared water sources such as swimming pools or lakes are big sources of giardia and even daycare centers, because you think about it, they're changing diapers, they're, you know, if, if they're not handled properly, then they can actually contaminate a bunch of surfaces at the daycare and spread the infection. And GRD is really hardy. You actually need very little to spread widely. So um, that, that's kind of the most common ways to get a GRD infection. Yeah, so, so places like daycare centers, those are prime places for outbreaks of the parasite. Yeah, I yeah. recently went swimming and I kept yelling that every time I drank a little water, I kept yelling that I'm going to get GRD <laughs> infection. So now, um, now Giardia is a protozoa. It moves around uh, via uh, flagella. Mm -hmm. uh, Chandy, can you go ahead and discuss a little bit about the biology and the life cycle of this parasite? Yeah, the parasite is really good at invading our immune systems. It has uh, one of the, when we ingest it, it's usually found uh, enclosed in a hard cyst. And the cyst is really hardy. It can withstand any types of temperature, pressure, and, you know, it can even resist stomach acids in our stomach, so, which are pretty strong. So when we ingest this, these giardia covered in cysts, we it can pass all the way through to our small intestine where it breaks open from the cyst and then begins to feed on the nutrients in our food that we have in our digestive system so once it does that they actually break into two so part of them move down to the colon and get excreted as you know more cysts to infect more people and you know spread the parasite but half of them um, i mean not half but many of them stay behind and they can burrow into our intestinal lining and to start messing with how we eat our food or how we absorb our food so it messes with how fat and carbohydrates are absorbed so we we could be eating or we could be eating the right food and still be considered malnutritioned um, the flagella, you mentioned the flag flagella, the flagella actually, you know, a lot of the flagella causes a lot of the discomfort that you face, the bloating, the gas, and a lot of other issues. So the overall, it can be a very messy affair. Um, Chandy, you, you spoke about Giardia being hardy a few moments ago. How does chlorine affect it, like in a swimming pool? Yes, um, that... It is strong enough to withstand even the chlorine, you know, in swimming pools. So it is really, I mean, it sounds like there's nothing you can do but hope for the best. But that's kind of the situation with Giardia. So hopefully, overall, the region has good sanitary and hygienic practices. And that's the best way to minimize the spread. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit about some of the symptoms already. But can you elaborate a little bit more on the symptoms and... Um, how serious can this infection get? Sure. Um, so the symptoms, the, I mean, the, the good news is that many people who have Giardia will not even develop symptoms. And even if they have a few symptoms, it can go away within two to five weeks. So depending on the level of infection that you have and how good your immune system is. But if you have symptoms, the most common one is diarrhea and the associated bloating, gas. You may even have nausea, vomiting. Uh, you can have severe fatigue. And if you, since you lose a lot of water from the diarrhea, you could have dehydration. So it's really important to kind of hydrate at the same time. Are, are there deaths known to GRD infection? Yeah, according to the World Health Organization, around 800,000 people die each year from waterborne diseases like Giardia. So it's it's quite a big number, I would think, for something that can be prevented. Yeah, yeah I would assume that would be dehydration related, if anything, right? Yeah. Um, diagnosis and treatment. Uh, of course, I work in a laboratory, so uh, you can identify it microscopically. There's EIA tests, ELISA tests, and others. Um, not very difficult to diagnose. 
No, thankfully, that's, I guess, that's a silver lining. It's not that hard to diagnose. And you you just have to provide stool samples and maybe a few of them over a few, you know, over a few days because Giardia is not always found in every, every one of your stool samples. That's right. Yeah, the parasite is shed on an intermittent basis. Um, Chandy, how about the treatment? Uh, easy to treat, no? Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned before, most people may not even have symptoms or uh, they may actually just recover on their own. So the biggest, I would say the number one thing that people need to do is to hydrate and make sure you're getting your electrolytes and your water when you are experiencing these symptoms. Rest is also important. Um, if you have severe diarrhea, if you know your infection is severe, you, I mean, I there are antibiotics that can help and people should reach out to their healthcare provider uh, so they can get early treatment. Yeah, yeah. Um, last thing I wanted to ask you about is prevention. How do you keep yourself from picking up the most common parasite in the world? Yeah, yeah, if you live in a developed nation, you're already ahead of the curve with that because there's a little more awareness, there's a little more hygiene and sanitation around it. Uh, crowded places um, are a risk factor. Swimming in pools that are contaminated with Giardia. So if you, ideally the people who are using the pool with you are staying away if they have diarrhea or they have symptoms of Giardia. Um, but if you live in a developed country, it, uh, overall I would say try not to drink unfiltered or you know water that's not been treated. Uh, be careful not to drink the water in swimming pools or, or you know, ingest it in some way in swimming pools or, deca you know, um, water that you're not sure where it's come from. If you're traveling to areas with um, that are developing nations that may have a high prevalence of Giardia, then make sure you have, you know, protective anti-diarrhea medication and other stuff on hand. Um, I think it's also important to on a higher level, there has to be greater awareness. There's almost 2 billion people, according to the World Health Organization, there's 2 billion people that are, you know, drinking contaminated water each year. So oh, on a bigger level, I think that countries need to make a better effort at, you know, getting this data out there to people, growing awareness, improving education and overall sanitation. Okay, and let me just go ahead and close with this last question is any final thoughts about giardia or anything that revolves around this parasite yeah i think i think it's important to stress that do not panic about this parasite it is one of the most common parasites but it is very resistant to our immune system as well if in certain people and actually giardia is something that can actually reappear so you think you've treated it but people can see that it reappears after a few months again so that I think it's important if you find yourself experiencing symptoms, please do contact a healthcare provider. And if you are a researcher or an expert in infectious diseases, then having data on hand, like what Gideon provides, Gideon is you know one of the leading infectious diseases database, having that kind of educational tools and for clinicians and microbiologists, that's important as well. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and link to Gideon Informatics to, uh, on the podcast. So uh, if people want to check out the information they have available, they can um, at their fingertips. Um, Shandana Bala, thank you once again for joining me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Robert. Really appreciate it.